Hi, and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I thought I'd show you something today, which is um, uh, goes on from the previous video I did recently on the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder that I got, the Sony one. But I met up with my good friend Dean the other day in town for a cup of coffee, and um, we'd been talking about tape recorders, and he said he had this old tape recorder, which was a four-track mono tape recorder that he got back in the 60s. <coughs> and um, I expressed an interest in it, and he gave it to me the other day. It's not working totally properly. It looks as a beautiful piece of vintage, vintage technology. It looks great. And um, I've already made some preliminary investigations as to whether it can be fixed and, and um, maybe how much that would cost and all that sort of stuff. But I haven't really gone too far with that yet, um, other than the contact a technician who fixed the other one that I bought the other day. So um, I'm going to show it to you. And... Um, if I end up getting it fixed, well then I'll show you it to you after it's been fixed. So now I'm going to try and um, juggle this. I've got the um, I'm, I'm doing this with my Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II. I'm saying it's mine, but it's not yet because I've got it on loan from my friend Len, who's got my Canon system on loan as well. And uh, okay, so that's better. You can see the uh, tape recorder in the background there. I'm just going to try and use this little zoom on here to zoom in. And uh, I'll show you. Uh, perhaps if I come, I might be able to hand hold this. This is a machine. I'll show you with the lid down. Looks a bit like that, and it's got some speakers on the the side down there, on either side. Beautiful gold speakers, and uh, beautiful light blue colour. And there you've got the, the tapes there. On it. It's a four-track mono machine. And I used to have one, this one's made in England in about 1960 or 59 or something like that. And I had a similar one called a, a, a Ferguson four-track mono tape recorder built in England years ago back in the 60s my, myself, one similar to this. Now, this turns on. I'm going to turn it on for you and show you what it does. Um, that's the on switch, but you can see there's can hear there's quite a noise in the motor there. The tape is the original tape that he had on it. He only ever had one tape. So to play the tape, you've got to push this button here, push it upwards, and to fast forward, you push this button this way, and to rewind, you go that way. But the problem is that this will go fast forward, but it won't go backwards. I'll show you what happens when we go fast forward. There you are, that's working fine. And we'll stop, and we'll try to go backwards. And it's not going backwards, it gets that far. <clears throat> but to actually play, there you go. And we've got a volume control here. You can hear some noise in the pot, potentiometer, though the ones that control the volume. Not much coming out of that, is there? The track switch. Not really getting a whole lot. It was playing back a bit for me yesterday. It's sounding pretty sick there, isn't it? <laughs> Radio gram increase, hold, superimpose. Let's pop the track back again. Nothing much happening. I'll stop it for the moment. So there you go. It's um this one this button over here is to when you're actually taping, you actually hold that in and then press the play button and it records four track and all that sort of stuff. But it's a Fidelity Argyle Major 4. Fidelity Argyle Major 4 thing. I'll just turn that off, it's pretty annoying. I'll show you some uh, still shots of this afterwards. I'll just leave, it, leave that open at the moment. Now I've just knocked the, the bracket off the, the hinge off the back of the thing. <laughs> just bear with me. So there you go. It's the Argyle Major 4 Fidelity 4-track four tape recorder.
it actually works on valves as well. You can actually, I've, I've, I've looked on the internet and you can actually get schematic diagrams and uh, manuals and all that sort of stuff. So I think it probably is repairable, but the chap that I talked to yesterday or the day before, he said, oh, it could, could be a lot of problems with something like that to try and fix that. So it may end up getting fixed. I might, um, I don't know that I want to have a go at it myself, or it might end up being just in my museum here or it might end up being donated to a museum maybe even the Kapunda Museum which I did a video about that just recently so there you go um, I'm keen to see what this looks like with the, on the vlogging cam camera in a minute and uh, using this uh, Olympus as a vlogging camera I, I, when I went out with my friend uh, Dean the other day I actually experimented with walking along uh, taking video just walking along the street with the image stabilisation I wasn't uh, working very hard at trying to hold the camera steady, but the um, the inbuilt um, stabilisation on this camera is very good for video and stills, and I was quite impressed with it. And I did a bit more video in the park, and and uh, I might uh, do another little video on that on what we did the other day, except that we did an interview together, a selfie interview, and of two old codgers sitting on a bench talking in the park. I think it'd be great, but I don't know whether I'd release it for for public viewing at this stage, and I'd have to get. Dean's permission to do that. So anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you wish, and uh, let me know your comments on this machine if you've got one or had one. I did find um, a video the other day on YouTube of someone who had a, a, a similar model to this, the same brand, but a, um, not as big a model as this one, and he was thinking about whether he's going to fix it or not, and had some similar problems to what this one's got. Anyway, I'm hoping that if I can get it going, it'll be a, a wonderful little um, vintage uh, piece of technology. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.